In this video, we're going to go through two problems involving linear speed and angular speed. Let's do the first problem together and see if you can try the second one on your own. And let's go through this. So the first one, it talks about a wheel of diameter 12 inches rotates at 10 revolutions per minute. We want to find the linear speed in miles per hour and the angular speed in radians per minute. So first off, what exactly is linear speed? So we have this wheel that's turning like this, right? But imagine a point on that wheel. If it was to go not in a circle, but like in a straight line, what would be the distance that it travels per unit time? Okay, so in this case, we're figuring out how many miles would it go in one hour. So what we can do is we can think about this as a unit conversion problem. We're gonna start off with the 10 revolutions per minute. And when you see the word per, you're thinking divided by. So 10 revolutions divided by one minute. So 10 revs per minute. And we're trying to convert this into miles per hour. Now the key is, is that one revolution, once around that circle, that's the circumference, right? And we know that the circumference is pi times the diameter or two pi times the radius. So in this case, since we have the diameter, let's do pi times 12 inches per one revolution. So that's how far you're traveling, one revolution. Notice the revolutions in the numerator and denominator, they cancel, and we have inches per minute. We want miles per hour. So let's go ahead and continue to convert this. We'll say there's 12 inches for every one foot. So you can see the inches cancel numerator and denominator. And we know there's 5,280 feet for every one mile. So now you can see the feet are canceling and we have miles per minute. We want miles per hour. So we know that there are 60 minutes for every one hour. Now the minutes in the numerator cancel with the minutes in the denominator and we have miles per hour. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply all these numerators together, all these denominators together, and then we're gonna divide. So let's go to the calculator and do that. So that comes out to 10 times 12 times pi, you can use 3.14, I'm using the pi key, times 60, all divided by, in parentheses, 12 times 5,280. So that comes out to approximately 0.35, actually, let's do 0.357 miles per hour. Now, let's say we wanna do the angular speed. So that's the second part of the question. I would go back to the 10 revolutions per minute. So we'll say 10 revolutions per one minute but we know that for every one revolution, see it turns once around, that's 360 degrees, or that's the same as two pi radians. So you probably know that from your unit circle. So two pi radians per one rev, notice the revolutions cancel, numerator and denominator, and we're left with radians per minute, and that's what we want. So if we go ahead and multiply horizontally here, we get 20 pi radians per minute and you got it. Let's take a look at another example. Okay, see if you can challenge yourself and do the second problem on your own. We've got a 29 inch bicycle tire, and when they say 29 inches, that means the diameter of the tire is 29 inches. It makes 25 revolutions in one minute. What's the linear speed in feet per minute and the angular speed in radians per minute? So how would you go ahead and do that one? Well, if I was gonna do it, I would start off with the 25 revolutions in one minute. So 25 revolutions in one minute. And we know that for every one revolution, once around that, when the tire makes one complete turn, it's gonna travel 29 pi inches. Because remember, pi times diameter is the circumference. That's the distance once around that bicycle tire. But notice now where the revolutions are canceling numerator and denominator, we're left with inches per minute. We want feet per minute. So we're gonna take it one step further. For every 12 inches, that's one foot. So you can see the inches are canceling numerator and denominator, and we're left with the units feet per minute, which is what we want. Now, sometimes your teacher will say, you know, leave this as an exact answer. And if that's the case, you would wanna leave this pi in here. So we're just gonna multiply 25 times 29 times one, so let's go ahead and do that real quick on the calculator. Let's see, so 25 times 29, 
FK times one is 725 pi. One times one times 12, it comes out to 12, and this is in uh, feet per minute. Okay, but now notice you can reduce this down a little bit. Let's see, does that reduce down? Let's see, nine, five, no, it doesn't look like it reduces. So this would be an exact answer, 725 pi over 12 feet per minute. But if we wanna get an approximation, I'm gonna go ahead and use the pi key. It's approximately 189.8 feet per minute. Now let's go ahead and do the angular speed. So the angular speed, again, I like to go back to the revolutions per minute, the 25 revolutions per one minute. And we know our conversion factor for every one revolution, uh, once around that circle, it's traveling, or the angle that it's traveling through is 360 degrees, or you could say two pi radians. Okay, so this way the revolutions cancel, numerator and denominator, and we're left with radians per minute, which is what we want. And so if I multiply it horizontally across here, we get 25 times two is 50 pi divided by one. So this is 50 pi radians, radians per minute. And that's your angular speed, the angle that it turns through uh, in one minute. So great job if you're able to get that one. If you wanna see uh, another video that I did with some more examples, linear speed and angular speed. I'll put a video right there on the screen. Go ahead and click on that video, follow me over, and we'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.